Listen online at namasteradiohouston.com. Download our app available on Apple and Android products. Ji ha, Namaste Radio. Hi, this is Sunil Gavaskar and I'm coming to Houston for a meet and greet event on Sunday, June 26th. The event is being hosted by India House in partnership with the H2H Foundation based in India. It is a fundraiser for a very worthy and noble cause, saving the lives of young children with congenital heart defects. I very much look forward to meeting and chatting with you about the mission to save children's lives. So be there. God bless you all. For tickets and sponsorship, call 713-929-1900 or visit www.indiahouseinc.org slash Sunil Dash Gavaskar and follow India House Houston on Facebook and Instagram. At Allings, we are all about the moments. The moments when family comes together for a sizzling hot plate and mocktails. The moments when friends order online for an at-home movie night. The moments when a child embraces their mom for the first time in years. Join us at Allings or order on DoorDash and make your moment. Halal menu available. Visit AllingsChinese.com. Navigating the complex world of health insurance can be frustrating. So why wait? Call an expert today. We present to you Simple Choice Insurance Brokerage. Call them today and get a health plan that fits the way you and your family lives. Simple Choice offers affordable health insurance for you and for the people you love. Simple Choice will make this easy for you. They will assist you through the process of selection and utilization of your benefits. Simple Choice provides excellent service. Want to learn more about individual plans, Medicare, dental, vision? Call Simple Choice today. Get a head start on your 2022 health insurance. Visit www.simplechoice.com. SimpleChoiceIB.com slash namaste or call 832-626-7791. That's 832-626-7791. Follow Simple Choice Insurance Brokerage on Facebook and Instagram. Dr. Namrata Sharma Goyal at Kidney Health Center has over 15 years expertise in blood pressure control, kidney stone and kidney transplant management, hemo and peritoneal dialysis, specializing in chronic kidney disease from diabetes, high blood pressure and autoimmune diseases. They promote the use of advanced technology in their business practice and treat their patients with a customized approach. All insurances, Medicare and Medicaid accepted. They have three convenient locations for you in Sugarland, Medical Center and West Houston area. For Dr. Namrata Sharma Goyal, board certified in nephrology, visit their website at bosonhealth.com or call 713-520-6875 for appointments. That's 713-520-6875. Namaste Radio on 99.5 FM. Gotta get it. This is Namaste Radio and you are listening to, you are listening to me, Vanshika. <laughs> and we do have our uh, guest right here. Uh, I'm so excited today that, uh, you know, I will be talking to her in person. I've known her for a long time now and I've been so proud of all her achievements and just so, so, so honored that she was able to take out time today and visit us here in studio on Namaste Radio Houston. So before we introduce her, I want to thank um, India House Houston for giving me that opportunity to talk with Mr. Sunil Gavaskar, our hero from India, our cricket hero. Thank you so much. And again, www.indiahouseinc.org. Uh, the event is next Sunday June 26th at India House Houston. So get your tickets. And now the guest that we have today, again, I'm so honored and I'm so thankful to her. Uh, today we have the absolute honor of having on Namaste Radio, Judge Julie Matthew. Thank and you, Vanshika. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. I'm so happy because we've been trying to, um, you know, uh, do this and I've been trying to wanting to have you on air with me 
but you know sometimes she's a busy lady but thank you so much for being here now a little bit about uh, uh, judge uh, julie the honorable judge was elected to county court at law number 3 in 2018 after having been associate municipal judge in arcola texas and a practicing attorney for 15 years with experience in a uh, mass tort civil litigation probate and criminal matters in fort bend and surrounding counties including harris montgomery galveston and brazoria judge matthew was voted the administrative judge for the county courts by her peers and also heads the first juvenile intervention and mental health court uh wow and uh judge matthew a fort bend resident of almost two decades is a proud 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 immigrant so Welcome again and let's get this going. <laughs> be here. I'm so excited to be here and thank you for having me. Your friendship means a lot to me so it's great to be here. Thank you so much. Uh now first thing, you know, we definitely want to know everything about <laughs> you know, your uh, the professional side, the lawyer side, being a judge. But before that, I want to ask you tell me um uh, I know you're from India for sure but then where were you born when did you move to America So I was born in Kerala in a little town um in a very little town in a very small hospital I've gone back to that or I drove past that hospital near my mom's house and I'm astonished how small it is but it is a very small hospital in um Kerala uh, and so my parents had the opportunity to come to the US in the 70s but one thing or another got postponed so they finally immigrated in 1986 when i was 10 years old and we initially moved to chicago uh very briefly then to philadelphia and i moved to texas 20 years ago now exactly may of 2002 wow wow you know i moved to texas about that time <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a uh, one similarity uh, that i found uh, with the, her but one thing what i love about her is uh, she is a go getter i have seen her go through her uh, campaign the first time such hard work so much dedication and congratulations thank you for the entire journey and good luck for the future journey <laughs> now tell us about this position um, you know county court at law number 3 uh being a judge there uh tell us about that tell us about what are county courts and what do they do because i may know a lot of these things but the person listening out there probably is um, you know they want to know what it is so it's a general jurisdiction court meaning it handles a lot of different subject matters um so i specifically handle juvenile felonies meaning those harder cases like murder um assault um aggravated assault um and misdemeanor crimes which are usually crimes that is a year or less and so on the adult side i only handle the adult misdemeanors which are the one year or less um and uh, which is like driving while intoxicated uh, some family violence assault um uh controlled substances depending on the amount so things like that come through my court and then probate uh when people die in texas with or without a will you have to probate their estate so that's an unlimited jurisdiction meaning it doesn't matter what the estate cost it could be millions or it could be small um so that um as well as guardianship when either somebody's born incapacitated and they reach the age of majority and um at that point their parents have to get a guardianship over them or when um someone becomes incapacitated and their matters have to be handled a uh, family member or even the state can take a guardianship over that person uh, if none is available and uh uh mental health cases when someone you know has a mental episode or a crisis and the police get called and if they're taken to a mental hospital initially the justice of the peace signs off on it but to retain them there to keep them 30 days or 45 days or the 90 days then a county court of law judge has to sign off on it um i also handle land condemnation when a government entity takes property from a landowner in fort bend county uh those cases come through my court as well and that's also unlimited jurisdiction meaning any amount um so there are a lot of things that we do that you know and one of my favorite part is marrying people mm-hmm. um i also got to swear in a new attorney last week and he swore in on the bhagavad gita oh wow so 
you know, I get to, you know, I get to be a part of people's lives, which is an amazing part of the job to be part of their um, happiness, you know, joys, getting married, um, as well as, you know, probate, you know, people have their loved ones that passed away that have to probate their estate. So those are, you know, um, those, pe you know, having those things in my life keeps me very grounded, um, that we're all just normal human beings going through our lives and living it. And but I get to be a part of people's lives in the county. Wow. Wow. A lot of lot of those things. Thank you for sharing all that detail. Uh, so uh, I know she's going to, um, you know, kill me after the interview for this. But <laughs> so anybody who gets DWI, they can call you. right? <laughs> Do not call me <laughs> like judgment. <laughs> I just got caught. I cannot give any legal advice. That would be a violation of my ethics as a judge. <laughs> Absolutely. I was just joking. I know. <laughs> but somebody's going to take it serious. <laughs> and, you know, every time and I have attended events where, you know, she's she's talking about what she does. And, you know, when people are doing meet and greet with you and there's always this one person who will ask. This kind <laughs> about, of... Or traffic tickets. <laughs> or traffic tickets. Yes. I don't handle traffic tickets at all. <laughs> the only time a traffic actually not. All, I mean, the only time a traffic ticket comes to me is when it gets appealed from the city court or you oh, know that maybe they're they're not paying they're not coming for uh, their uh, i i just take a deferred whenever i get a traffic <laughs> ticket let's just say that <laughs> that's the best <laughs> so now uh is this position countywide it is a countywide position and my term is every four years so i have to run for this position every four years so last time was 2018 and then now it's again to 2022 we are yes. up for elections up in for re-election Time has gone by quick, very quick. I was about to say it was just like yesterday. Seemed like yesterday when um, you know, and, and I like I was saying, and when I say this, I'm I'm not just saying because you know we're into. I have literally seen her. Uh, you know, it's not easy campaigning, like everywhere, being there, talking to people, and uh, it's it's time for that again, huh? Well, you didn't realize. Remember, I mean, initially when I started, my youngest was six months. So now she's five. Wow. Like the, it just <laughs> like people will have asked me, "What makes you do this?" Like you know, with and people have told me, "I don't think you're going to be able to do it. You have three kids," <laughs> and you know. I don't even know sometimes how I did it. Towards the end, like I see my pictures the last time around towards the end of the campaign when early voting is happening. I mean, my, the life out of me is drained. You can tell like I have and I remember even telling a good friend of mine, Bincy Jacob, uh, she was part of my campaign the last time. I was like, Bincy, I just can't do it. I don't <laughs> have anything in me. She's like, nope, now is it. Kick it up. Kick it up more. <laughs> Some more so. <laughs> coffee shots. And, 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 and it's good to have great friends like yes. that who keep you motivated. And definitely, Bincy is a great person. We see her, you know, I've, I've seen her helping you out in a lot of ways in, during campaigning. She's and, good. Yeah, amazing. So uh, it's countywide. That means everybody who lives in Fort Bend County, when you go for your voting this time, you can see her there. Yes. And I'm not at the top of the ballot. Listen, judges are towards the bottom. So do vote down ballot. Look for my name. Please check that. I need you to go all the way down. There is such a drop off of people who vote up top and then go not all the way down. And it's so very important. Judges pay such a critical role that people fail to realize. You know, there's so many judges. That's the truth of the matter. But they really do play a critical role. Um, in Fort Bend County. So please do come all the way down ballot and look for our names. Absolutely. So now again, we are coming back to the question we've said, we've, you know, it's, it's very difficult. Campaigning is not easy. And everybody who does this, I've spoken to, they always say this, it's not easy. Why did you decide to run for this position? So truth be told, you know, Fort Bend County as much as diverse it was, it really was not very diverse in 2018. Mm -hmm. And I believe that I was qualified to be in this position and that I could make a difference and change. And, you know, um, a lot of times, especially Indians and those in the Deshi community are seen as perpetual immigrants. And we're not. We are part of this nation. We are part of the fabric. I remember growing up, there was this commercial for cotton, the fabric of America. Like, we are the fabric of America. And so... Um, we should play a role in what happens to us as well as our children, our future generations. So I felt this was, you know, what I'm most qualified to be at and where I can serve my community. And so that is why I decided to run. 
Wonderful, wonderful. And we need we need more people that we can uh, you know relate to. We need more people that we can talk to. And one thing I know for sure is uh, just Judge Matthew is very easy to talk to. Um, you, if if you reach out to her, if you talk to her, she's going to listen Thank to you. you. Uh, and you've done that with me, and I've seen you do that with other people. So definitely, definitely. Now, first term is ending. Um, how has your journey been for the first term? Uh, let's focus on things that you achieved uh, during this term. And there are some commendable things that you did, especially my favorite, what I was reading. And I was, uh, you know, I was like, wow, this is because mental health is something that um, I, I, I want to talk more and more about mental health. We do a special mental health show on Namaste Radio. And you have this uh, juvenile intervention and mental health code that you handle. So how did uh, that come up? But of course, tell us all that uh, you know you want to share du during your first term that you achieved. So the juvenile, I, I didn't have, I had a specialty court that I actually, another judge wanted. So I gave her um, that specialty court that I had, which was a gross court uh, that girls who are trafficked um, and they, you, they give them the um, help that they need. So I ended up not having a specialty court and I really wanted to have one. So this is something in addition to my regular docket that I created. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was thinking about what to do, what to do. And our probation head of our, you know, initially I considered domestic violence. I considered um, pets, like pet abu like uh, animal abuse. And it wasn't just panning out necessarily. And then the head of our juvenile probation called me and said, you know, we have a program called Tacomi Court, Tacomi. And where Texana, as well as um, um, our juvenile probation, work with kids in who are already in the system, who already gotten in trouble for something, mm -hmm. um, and they work with them to help them, guide them, and become, you know, successful in uh, their probation and completing it. But what we don't have is an accountability partner, and that would be great if you can maybe create a court that works with those two groups to help these kids you know, become successful members of society because it really does cost more to incarcerate somebody than making sure that they are productive members of the, our community. And so I thought, wow, that's amazing. So I contacted the Office of Court Administration, went through and registered this court. And so what happens is, you know, uh, if a child in our system has mental health issues, um, they work with Tacomi Court, I mean, Tacomi and uh, the Juvenile Intervention Mental Health Court with the probation department, they pretty much handhold these kids. Uh, there's resources available. If they don't have a driver's license, they'll give them the driver's ed courses so they can drive because one of the things is they have to work. If they're over 16, they need to have a job mm -hmm. because we don't want them to have idle time. Uh, we want them to be, you know, doing something that they're not doing something else that they shouldn't be doing. So um, if they need, if they're not able to complete their high school, we give them GED courses and tutoring that they need so they can take the GED test and pass it. If there's something that they need, for example, even food, I think mm -hmm. our probation department steps in to help them. There's so many things uh, that these resources, that these kids need that is taken care of. Some of them come from really horrible backgrounds. You know, it's unfortunate. And um, and we do whatever we can uh, to make sure, you know, they see me. I hear about them all the time. If they do something wrong, especially I hear about it immediately. But I see them once a month and most of the time it's, I'm the accountability partner. So, you know, they may not listen to the probation department. They may not listen to Texana, what's telling them or taking their medication or going to the counseling sessions. But when a judge says, I'm ordering you to complete this, or I'm going to take you into custody, it's then a whole different ball game. So really I'm the accountability partner. And a lot of these kids, when they come in, you know, being a mother, um, I see them. I mean, I tell them, you're my child. When you're in this court, I'm going to treat you like my child. You know, you're, you are somebody, you mean something, your life matters, you know, get like, I really, not a single person in our juvenile probation department or in our, in, in Fort Bend wants you to fail. Like all of us have a desire for you to succeed and become something. And I don't think there have been times that somebody had told them you're worth something or you're valued. I think it's very lacking in some of these children's lives to be able to say that to them. It means a lot to me. Wow. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Um, more power to you for that <laughs> because uh, like you just said, a lot of times all this mental health illness, uh, 
you know, these things that kids can do, uh, especially when you see kids, uh, you know, in courts like, uh, you know, juvenile court related to these kind of issues, uh, there's a lot with family that is involved. And it's uh, such a coincidence. I was, uh, Sushil and I were watching a show yesterday. It is a Korean show about this judge. And I was actually thinking about it because <laughs> she's a judge who's uh, handling uh, juvenile cases. Um, you know, even it could be murder, mental health related. And she was actually doing exactly how you were describing. So when you were describing this right now, I was actually imagining the court session in the same way. Uh, I must send you that link if you get time Absolutely. to watch it. Um, she was also so passionate, just the way you described. Uh, tell us about another program that you uh, started, which was the Kitchen to the Courthouse program for high school girls. And that, that sounds so interesting, Kitchen to the Courthouse. So I know, I'll, I mean, initially when I came up with it, I think my friends or like people who were part of the campaign were like, ah, I don't know, that has some negative connotations. But I have worked in the restaurant industry. And one of the things I noticed that even though in historically um, that it's the females that cook in the kitchen and do all this type of stuff, it's still, um, you know, if you go to a Michelin star restaurant, the chef is usually male. male correct. So um, I happened to run across our famous desi chef, Roshni Grani. And I was like, you know, I have this idea for a, a like a, series called Kitchen to the Courthouse. Will you partner with me? And then I approached also India Culture Center, ICC, and I asked them, hey, I need your partnership. I need kids, you know, for this program. So what we had initially, we were like focused on uh, South Asian females and we opened it up. No, but let's just open it up to everybody. Mm -hmm. So um, for, but more so the females, uh, you know, girls, I wanted uh, girls to be able to have exposure to other ladies who have broken the glass sheet ceiling even you know back in 2002 2003 when i got my license there was very few 2003 i mean there was very few females even in the courthouse you know most of them did like transactional work very few did litigation so you know in every area still there is something that has to be done even the pay scale right now female gets you know much less than what a male um, colleague yes. makes. So this is something that is not over yet. And we yeah. still have, you know, things that we need to move and change in our culture, in our society, in this country. And so I thought, you know, and I had doctors, lawyers, politicians, uh, various sectors of our industry join and talk about how they got to where they are, the pressures that they faced, um, what led them to their jobs, what led them to, uh, be in the place that they are. So it was an amazing program. I need to repeat it again. I haven't had a chance to sit down and plan it out, uh, but it will happen again for sure. That's amazing. And uh, the ladies part is so true. Even in, if I have to look at myself in the media, you know, being a female, being young, a lot of people underestimate you, you know, like really. And then later on, they're like, oh, my God, yeah, oh, yeah, we didn't know you could do this. And it's but if it was a male, then it, that's that's not what they hear. And uh, more power to you for this. What about the Chai and Chat series? So that, I like all these names that you're giving them. <laughs> you know, there was, you know, Coffee with the Court was something that existed. Uh -huh. And I was thinking... Well, I am definitely Deshi. <laughs> <laughs> I want my chai. <laughs> so let's do something called Chai and Chat Series. And I had several times we opened up the court to the general public because I don't think, I mean, as you said, very not very many people know what happens in a courthouse, what a judge does, what a courtroom looks like, what, yeah. you know, what the back offices look like, just for people to come in, have a chat, ask questions, figure out what we do. And so I, you know, we had several so far and I, plan to continue it as well because I think it's important for the public to know what what you know happens on every sector of our local government you know judges are a part of it and the courthouse is a part of it and it's just not only bad there's good things that happen in a courthouse as well absolutely anything else uh, what, that you would like to share about your first time because we're going to get into a break in about five minutes and then come back with you know going forward with the Come upcoming second term, but uh, what else would you like to share about it? It's been an amazing journey. And so many of you in Houston area and the surrounding area have helped me throughout, has been there, has supported me. And so I thank you for that. It's been, 
you know, just to be, sometimes I've looked back on my, as I walked through the courtroom out to the hallway, I looked back and I was like, wow, like where this girl from like a little village in India is now one of the judges in the county court. And I'm truly hope to make, um, you know, all of you that have supported me proud and uh, to have your continued support. So thank you for, thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's very much appreciated. Absolutely. You know, everybody that I speak with is so proud of you. A lot of values that you carry, we all are so proud of those values. So thank you so much for, you. Uh, you know, being a strong woman out there, uh, being a strong judge out there, uh, helping these kids. That's one of the most amazing things that I've learned. You know, every time I learn more about Judge Matthew, I am so impressed. This was something when I was reading. Um, and sometimes, you know, we see each other often, but I don't get to read things in detail. But through this interview, I learned so much more about you. And uh, um, like I always say, more power to you. And everybody that we meet, everybody is so... Um, you know, happy with um, the way the first term has been. Everybody's yeah. looking forward to, you know, it, w nobody's ever thinking that, oh, you know, um, oh, it's election time again. It's like, okay, she's going to be there. because we, <laughs> That's not, you can't do it without all of you. <laughs> there's no problem because, you know, you're so loved by everybody that you're going to be there. So we are, are going to be talking about a lot of details when it comes to uh, how, uh, you know, you can be a part of campaign, how you can donate to the campaign and a little more about her uh, family life, because, of course, there's nothing without a family. Yes. But before I get into this break, I definitely want to thank uh, Gauri Siddhi Vinayak Temple for always supporting Namaste Radio. They had the big Mahapuja yesterday at their temple. But, you know, temples also always need your support. So reach out, uh, visit the temple, 5645 Hillcroft Avenue, Suite 701. And it is located in the heart of Houston. Pandit Pradeep Pandya Ji is an amazing uh, priest, always uh, there to help uh, people. You need any kind of puja, he's going to be there. But if you, any time in life, want to even get some positivity into your day, just call him. He's so easy to talk with. He's so fun to talk with. Pandit Pradeep Pandya Ji, 832-466-9868. Gauri Siddhi Vinayak Temple in Houston. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram. I am in conversation with Judge Julie Matthew, uh, you know, the count at the county court at law number three, the Fort Bend County Judge. We're going to get into this ad break and be right back. Swagat hai aapka. Sunte rahiye, Namaste Radio. Gauri Siddhi Vinayak Temple of Houston Aap sab ko amantrit karta hai Hindu wedding ceremony ho ya engagement Satya Narayan puja ho ya Gayatri Havan Baby shower puja ho ya Vastu Shanti Lakshmi puja ho ya Ganpati puja ya jeevan mein sirf positivity lani ho Aaj hi call kare Pandit Pradeep Pandya ji ko 832-466-9868 Gauri Siddhi Vinayak Temple located hai 5645 Hillcroft Avenue Suite 701 pe Details ke liye follow kare Gauri Siddhi Vinayak Temple Facebook pe To aaj ji call kare pandit pradeep pandya ji ko 8324669868 jai shri ganesh gangadapati namo namah shri siddhi vinayak namo namah Navigating the complex world of health insurance can be frustrating so why wait call an expert today we present to you simple choice insurance brokerage Call them today and get a health plan that fits the way you and your family lives. Simple Choice offers affordable health insurance for you and for the people you love. Simple Choice will make this easy for you. They will assist you through the process of selection and utilization of your benefits. Simple Choice provides excellent service. Want to learn more about individual plans, Medicare, dental, vision? Call Simple Choice today. Get a head start on your 2022 health insurance. Visit www.simplechoice.com. SimpleChoiceIB.com slash namaste or call 832-626-7791. That's 832-626-7791. Follow Simple Choice Insurance Brokerage on Facebook and Instagram. Hi, this is Sunil Gavaskar and I'm coming to Houston for a meet and greet event on Sunday, June 26th. The event is being hosted by India House in partnership with the H2H Foundation based in India. It is a fundraiser 
for a very worthy and noble cause, saving the lives of young children with congenital heart defects. I very much look forward to meeting and chatting with you about the mission to save children's lives. So be there. God bless you all. For tickets and sponsorship, call 713-929-1900 or visit www.indiahouseinc.org slash Sunil Dash Gavaskar and follow India House Houston on Facebook and Instagram. Namaste Radio. Coming in. Live every Saturday at 10 a.m. on 99.5 FM, 24-7 on NamasteRadioHouston.com. Ji ha, Namaste Radio. Welcome back. We are in conversation with Judge Julie Matthew. My name is Vanshika Vipin and you are listening to Namaste Radio. And yes, we are live on Namaste Radio's Facebook page. So you can watch the in-studio, all the musti. And yes, I am with the judge, but she's such a fun, loving judge that, uh, you know, I'm doing musti with her. (laughs) (laughs) So we are talking to Judge Julie Matthew on Namaste Radio. And uh, we spoke about, you know, uh, her uh, during her first term, where she's from. Now getting to the second time, it's election time again, it's campaign time again. But before that, I one question that I had to ask her and I missed on that was uh, you, when you were elected, you were elected as the first uh, Desi, the Indian American judge woman, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the first woman who was elected as an Indian American judge. So first judge. Indian American woman elected to the bench in the U.S. Wow, congratulations. How did that feel now? So I didn't really know about this factor till afterwards. A friend of mine was as part of the South Asian Bar Association. And she said, I don't know if there's any other Indian females elected to the bench. And so I was looking at it and even the South Asian Bar Association was telling me this person here, that person there. And so I looked it up and I'm like, well, they're all associate judges and associate judges. There's a difference between associate judges and presiding judges to have these titles. You have to be a presiding judge. And so I don't know anywhere else in the country that there was another Indian female elected other than in our own Fort Bend County. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> and the day you got those results, what was the first reaction? So I was in Cinco Ranch in the Katy area. I was mm. exhausted and I saw everyone from the other party kind of pack up and leave around, you know, six o'clock, six, six years. And the polls close at seven, right? Mm-hmm. So I've been out there every single day on my feet, 12 hours a day, just outside at various polls. So I was like, well, if they're leaving, what's the point of me standing around? So I decided I'm going to go home. I'm done. I can't. I pulled into my parents' house to get the kids and I was, I couldn't even get out of my car. So I'm sitting in my car outside my parents' house with like one leg out. And, um, you know, at that point, I it's like 645. I refreshed the election results, you know, the site for the county where you check your election results. And I refreshed it and I'm seeing like, you know, 100 and something and 90 something for the other person or 80 something for the other person. It was a good 20,000 significance um, difference in regard to the numbers. So I'm, And like at that point, I'm like, there is no way that my opponent can make 20,000 up. I mean, there is, but, you know, it's like highly unlikely. Chances are less. Yeah. So at that point, I was just, you know, I was on my hands and knees just thanking God. I mean, that was like, and just, you know, screaming at the top of my lungs. My (laughs) mom comes out and she's like, what happened? Did you get into a fight with Jimmy? Like she thought I got into a fight with my husband or something. I don't know why she thought that would be my reaction or whatever. But I'm like, no, mommy, I think I won. I think I won. And so, um, you know, just in, I I just don't even know how to express the joy. It just almost seemed impossible. And, you know, people flat out to my face told me you're not going to win. Good friends of mine, like very, very good friends of mine said, you know, you can at least get your name out there this time around. Like they never thought I was going to win, but I was like, you know, I'm going to win. I just kept telling myself I'm going to win. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. Wherever I talked, I said, I'm going to win. You know, it was just like a mantra. I just kept repeating. And so, um, 
even when I showed up at the party, the county party had a party at um, Indian Summer now, but before Madras Pavilion, yes, Madras Pavilion, and I showed up. I I was like the first person on stage. I didn't know what to say. I'm like, I think I won. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I was. <laughs> Because we're, I mean, the official election results aren't there, and you're like, eh. You know? I, hi, guys. I think I won. <laughs> and so, just, you know, with the excitement of everybody there, because there were so many people that was volunteering for uh, various campaigns, three Preston Kulkarni's campaign. There were just uh, so many people that we were meeting and yeah. we became friends and family with. And those people within the four years, I know I've forgotten some folks, and, you know, and it's hard to remember every. Um, and I apologize, but like though, like a lot of those people that I've met still play a role in my life, and I'm so happy to have them and the support they have given because we couldn't have done it without those folks that worked so hard in the background, knocking on doors, being out there, talking to people, hosting the meet and greets, and most of all, you know, resources. You know, people have given financial support, like you, who have given me now this opportunity to just come and speak to your. Um, listeners, you know, we thank you for those. That those are things we'll never forget. And I mean, as long as I'm alive, I will be grateful for my friends for all that they have done. No, absolutely. I have believed in her from the very first day. I think I spoke to her over the phone. And I'll be honest with you, at that time, we didn't even talk about her being Daisy, nothing. It was just Hey, I'm standing for this. And, you know, this is, and we were like, okay. And we were about to meet at the council, uh, some event over there. And I was like, okay, I look forward to meeting you there. And I see her, she was wearing a sari because I thought <laughs> she was not Indian when we spoke with her. And uh, I was so pleasantly surprised. I looked at her, I said, you are, uh, you know, at that time I, I called her, you are Julia. And then she's like, yes. I was like, oh my God. And I went and gave her a hug. That's, that's how I first time met her. And then, uh, Wow, what a journey and congratulations again. I just want to say I love wearing a sari. I am actually part of a sari club. It's oh, kind of wow. crazy. <laughs> um, but these ladies that meet once a month for sure, I don't get to go to all of the meets, but you have to go at least twice a year, otherwise they'll kick you out. Oh. <laughs> Hope you've made two I, one I so tried. far. I have made one so far. <laughs> okay, you have um, six more months for the second one. <laughs> and so, um, and you know, I grew up, you know, not really wearing sari. I mean, like I think, you know, for fun growing up, all the girls used to put on a sari. But I really, you know, these ladies know every intricate details, like where a weave is from, who makes it, like loom. And now people started gifting me saris, which I love. I <laughs> She's like, get, bring them on. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I mean, I mean, uh, like, there are people that collect from every state, from every region. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. Like, the you know, the variations that exist wow. in our country, in India, you know? And so... Um, I love learning these things and I'm very much, I love history. So anything to do like anything for me, that's like, you know, fabric, you know, like, you know, about India, it's like saris are traditional wear. So to know more about it and to learn from these ladies who are part of this group, I love it. Oh, I need to feature them on my show sometime. Yes, that's absolutely. such an amazing, <laughs> um, you know, thing to keep our culture, keep sari, uh, because not we all just wear sari, but all that background behind, behind sari and uh, behind, you know, how you put it on, different kinds, different materials. Yeah, I mean, That's I amazing. couldn't tell you the difference between a kanjivaram or a Banarasi or, uh, you know, all those type of things. Now I can look at it and I can kind of know it too oh, wow. because I've been exposed to it. Oh, wow. Wonderful. And I hope one day my children, my three girls will wear it. Wow. I'm, Fingers I'm, crossed. <laughs> for sure. Sure. They, they're going to follow their mommy. So now second term, second time elections. Tell us about the primary. Did you have any opponent? Over I did not have a primary opponent. I okay. was very lucky in that. They were like, no, that's... She, <laughs> we're not, <laughs> no, no. We're not <laughs> taking Panga <laughs> with Judge Matthew here. <laughs> so, okay. So primary is done. Now we're looking towards the main election in November. Uh, what do you look, look to achieve now? In, in your next uh, four years? So I want to continue what we started. I mean, I've had such great programs and initiatives that we put together that has been successful. So I want to build on that. I mean, you know, there's always, you know, sometimes when I can't sleep or when I'm driving and like thought will come to me, like, why don't we do that? There's one right in my head right now that I want to do. <laughs> I'm not going to disclose it just yet because I don't want somebody to steal it. <laughs> We want to patent it for. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so there are a lot of things that I hope to achieve and there's um and build upon what we have already done. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, first term, I mean, like several, you know, you takes, nobody comes on the bench knowing every single area that you have to handle. So to now be at a level where I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable in my skin as a judge. And it takes some getting used to because there are expectations of you. There are, you know, you're, you have to be a certain t- I mean, you, the demeanor that you have to be as a judge, there's so many that goes into it that I don't think people realize or understand. And not only do I have to take care of my court, the staff, I mean, I have social life, you know, we have to, we are elected officials. So that means socially we have to be a part of things. Yes. And, you know, I think, you know, sometimes like I'm, I am pulled in all sorts of different directions. I have a family as well. I have kids. I have a husband. I have a home. I have parents. You know, so there's a lot of things that we get pulled from all sorts of ways. So trying to like coming to a balance of all of it, where it's a healthy balance. Um, I think I'm finally there. And so I, I look forward to being able to achieve so much more with the with what I'm given because you know more is to some what was it much is given more I I can't I, there's a quote something like that that more is suspected you know mm-hmm. from much that's given right. so I want to be able to do that for the next four years wonderful wonderful and uh, we wish you good luck for that thank you and uh, what are some of the core policies that you believe in and you know you've carried in the last four years you'll carry forward so politics, I can't really <laughs> talk about it because uh, one of the things as judges, even when there's things nationally that mm-hmm. are grabbing attention, we, we're always supposed to be neutral in what our personal beliefs are. Right. And so um, policy-wise, in regard to me as a person, me as a judge, I really want to be fair and equal to all those who comes in my court, uh, treat people with respect and kindness, um, you know, I think, you know, people sometimes just don't see people, you know, you know, there's those stories out there, like, you know, even the cleaning staff say hi to them. Yeah. You know, I, I truly strive to be the best that I can be as a person. I'm not perfect. There's a lot of me that, you know, as I'm, as a work, work in progress, but, um, I, I'm, I really do try to be genuine and sincere in what I say and what I do. And I think that is the best policy as a person that I can be as a judge, as, as a person. Absolutely. That's that's amazing. Um, now, um, who is your biggest support? Because we 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 know campaigning is not easy and balancing this life because you mm. go to so many events, like you said. I'm I mean, sometimes I, I know you're attending like five <laughs> events in a day and it's a packed weekend. You have three kids, you know, your husband's there. It's it's we always think about the kids. But at some time I feel that, you know, even that life your time with as as a spouse i mean that's important um, your parents you know like um, how do you balance all that and the biggest support in this entire thing like so i ha- i do have a fa- i mean i do my family is my biggest support so i was away wednesday thursday friday for a conference i got home at 11 o'clock last night i had to do my continuing legal education so my husband and my parents manage the kids. So mostly, you know, my husband also has a, his own business. And so he's kind of busy. So my parents do drop the kids off, pick up the kids and all those type of things. My youngest is in summer school. So my dad was going to my house at 6.50 in the morning to get wow. her, to put her on the bus at 7 o'clock or 7.07. And then, you know, the middle child stayed with them. And my oldest is off on her own. She drives, she does things. So she has, you know, she's at volleyball practice now. <laughs> and then I think this evening when I asked her, she has a youth youth retreat at her church or something or another. So she does her own stuff. I, you know, it, as any teenager who's able to drive now, but really my parents are my backbone and, my husband really, you know, I, he has stepped up quite a bit. He was not as supportive when I initially ran. Um, he didn't understand the whole concept. He didn't know, you know, I was never home. Like right. with initially two young kids and do not be home was not something he was happy about. But I'm glad, you know, he's come around. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a big support now. That's he amazing. Is, he is. And, you know, uh, and I do have to carve out time where I spend with them. You know, there are times I'm somewhere and he gets off work early and he'll say, can you meet for lunch or can you meet for dinner? And I'll make sure like, like, you know, I'll go because I know that he needs me as well. Yeah. And, or we'll, 
take a vacation by ourselves where the kids aren't with us because those are important too because you have to cultivate like your marriage is something yes. that you have to water you can't just let it be think that it's going to be and I know he's you know there are times that he gripes that he doesn't get enough time with me uh, but you know that mean it's I mean I really give what I can <laughs> No, and it's you're working out, very so hard. It's worked out. <laughs> and the reason I'm asking and, you know, all these details to her is because I want everybody out there who's listening to us, watching us on Facebook Live to understand what it takes, the amount of hard work, the sacrifice to be a judge and, you know, to go through these campaigning process to after, even after winning, it just doesn't stop. Uh, because of media, I'm attending a lot of events too. And I see her there every time. And it's a lot of hard work, people. She's putting in a lot of hard work for all of us. So remember all this. Learn, understand all this. And um, that sounded pretty interesting. Lunch date with Judge Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag lunch date with Judge Matthew. <laughs> I like that. You know, um, if your husband was ever uh, very uh, socially active on like Instagram or Oh, no, Facebook. no, he's not. <laughs> you will never see him post a picture. I have to force him to take pictures, unfortunately. He's not. He's very much an introvert and very much an extrovert. So it's two very two different personalities at that. But, you know, even trying to get him to events and I'm sure he hates me talking about him but uh um but this is an intimate conversation yes. to all those listeners out there too but you know I have to start two weeks in advance I'm like you're going to this event <laughs> no I'm not you're going to this event no I'm not <laughs> You know, that reminds me of someone, my husband. <laughs> so it's like, you, and I understand this is because a week ahead, I have to keep my schedule out. And, you know, like how you say in Hindi, like, patana patai, like, you know, like, please, this, that. And yes, but at the end of the day, definitely uh, a successful woman like her, it, it's not possible without a supporting husband like that. So a big uh, shout out, a big, uh, you know, uh, kudos to all these uh, supporting husbands. Yes. I'm, I'm so happy to have one too. He uh, waters all my dreams. He supports me. He's like, go get it. And they motivate us. And that's why, you know, it gives us more. Good job, feeling. Sushil. <laughs> so there's a, a small joke behind Sushil's out there also, because the first time, I, was it the first time or I no, no, it was into it. I called him Sohail. Yeah. And then just kind of stuck. So I just kept calling him Sohail. Sohail. I was like, that's a better name. <laughs> <laughs> so she renamed him Sohail. And then every time we see each other, we always make fun of him as like, hey, Sohail. <laughs> but uh, now, when is the election day and um, how can people get more information about you? So election is in October. In mid-October, early voting starts. And November 6th is election day itself. Um, we you can go go to Judge Julie, J, uh, Judge J U L I. There's no E in my name, so JudgeJulie.com, or even just Google Judge Julie Matthew, and you can get my information. Um, so whatever you need, uh, it's there. Or and the, even my phone number is yeah. there. So if you want to have a chat, or um, but there are people that contact me about legal questions, and most of the time, I really I cannot answer it. Um, so unfortunately, that's only negative about it. <laughs> but uh, uh, if, if you need further information, definitely visit uh, judgejuliematthew.com and also her Facebook page, Judge Julie Matthew. So reach out and, you know, um, definitely any questions about her campaigning. Yes. One thing about elections and campaigning is, and we need to address this, is that we need financial support. Yes. Right. And um, how can they, uh, you know, is, is the website the best way to uh, donate? The website has a PayPal link that you can donate to um, or on PayPal. If you look up Judge Julie Matthew, um, it's it, it is expensive. You know, a lot of times you only really have rich people in politics for the fact of how much it costs to run a campaign. And, you know, even if sometimes when you ask and repeatedly ask, I don't like to ask. And that's a big, you know, factor. Uh, but you really need money. And I mean, without money, you know, for me as a countywide, there's at least a need of $150,000. Wow. And initially when I was running, I was considering way back in 2013, I was considering running for like a JP court. And at that time, the party secretary told me that judge is very well liked and you need $85,000 at least for that spot. And this is in 2013. And I heard the 85,000 and I was like, eh, <laughs> that's not going to happen. But, you know, and I really did decide to do this because 
I mean, that whole, you know, perpetual immigrant thing, I wanted to put that to an end um, and to be really a part of this country and to be, you know, affecting change. Mm -hmm. And so I hope, you know, especially those of Desi descent see the importance of things like that and help out because even if you make a donation of hundred dollars, that does go a long way. You know, those big four by fours that you see those cost. you know, prices have gone up, you know, when I bought it, it was like 120, I think. And now it's probably, you know, quite a bit. I haven't really bought new signs. I need to buy new signs. And I think everybody has now put their picture on the signs. Yes. I'm quite nervous to do that, <laughs> but I guess I should too. And so I need to start doing those type of things. And, you know, even websites cost money, having domain names cost money, yeah. like little things, everything that we do, like when we go to events, we have to pay for those things, everything, you know, costs money. So uh, it is a big financial hardship sometimes. And I, you know, in, in, I, I hope the Indian community, the Desi community sees a value in having those of us also be representative and the local government and it takes a part in it even if you can give 20 bucks 50 bucks 100 bucks thousands of bucks if you're rich uh each person can contribute twenty five hundred dollars to a campaign in my campaign in my particular position and i only have such a short window to raise that money judges have these local i mean the ethical rules that we have to follow and our we can only fundraise for about a year and something so we and everything that we need to do has to be done within that period so um if you can help out i would gladly gladly take it and appreciate it and uh, we'll be thankful to you wonderful and so you can contribute financially but here's another thing you can do uh you know judge julie matthews a facebook page you can share that on your facebook share tag people whatsapp that to all your friends and also the best way to let her talk to a lot of people is you can host a meet and greet for yes. her you know call your five friends for a chai and uh you know um uh, Judge Matthew will be more than happy to come over, talk to them. And that's that that adds a ripple effect that, you know, they, then another person can host it. And I think that goes a long way. So there's a lot of ways you can help. Um, so please reach out. Of course, financial help is very important. Yes. But try to help however you want. Uh, and, um, you know, she uh, if there's, again, any question, judgejuliematthew.com or go to her Judge uh, Julie Matthew Facebook page and reach out to her. Um, now, before I let you go, uh, Judge Matthew, is there anything else you would like to tell uh, people out there, even someone who's, uh, you know, a young uh, person out there who is thinking of being a lawyer or thinking of getting into politics, thinking of being a judge one day like you? So one of the things, I mean, I'm just going to say this briefly, like I have people, especially in the Desi community, reaching out about internships and things. And I think I have like six or seven interns. So I haven't, at this point, I have to put a stop to it because I can't take any more people in my court. But I mean, those things are open because I am able to, I'm in this position to help, which is why I'm able to take those. And so um, it's, you know, but I am open for you visiting um, and people coming into the courthouse and learning more. Um, what I want to leave with is, you know, one of the things I, especially the juveniles in my court, and I said, you know, people have failures in life and I have failures in my life. And so it's what you do, the next step that you take the, or the next steps down the road that you take is what determines what your future holds. So keep your chin up. Um, in this world, there's so much, so much happening, inflation, deaths, shootings, all those type of things. There's so much that all of us are dealing with emotionally, mentally, uh, psychologically. So keep your chin up. And if you have a failure, just make sure that you get back up, that getting back up, taking that next breath, taking, you know, thinking about that next day is what counts in the long run. So, you know, things pass and what you do next matters. Wonderful, beautiful words. Getting back up is very, very, very important. Um, so, November, it's, you know, you need to remember Judge Julie Matthew, and it's on the, it's the Democrat uh, side, right? Yes, I'm on the Democratic ticket. Perfect. So we need to remember that. And of course, we will be sharing more flyers on Namaste Radio's Facebook page so that we keep, uh, you know, uh, pe reminding people. Uh, thank you so much, Judge Matthew, for taking our time and thank talking you. with us today. And before uh, we end our show today, I want to remind everybody that on Monday, it's the International Day of Yoga 2022 celebration at India House Houston. So don't forget, uh, be there 6.30 to 8.30. Uh, they will be celebrating it at India House. It is uh, in partnership with several different organizations. 
And uh, for details, visit uh, indiahouseinc.org slash IDY 2022 or just follow India House's Facebook page. And of course, the Sunil Gavaskar event is next Sunday. It was an honor speaking with him today. And um, definitely, indiahouseinc.org visit for buying the tickets and uh, for all the details for that event, which is next Sunday, uh, June 26th. And before we go, we also want to wish all the fathers out there a very happy Father's oh, happy Day. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> uh, to your father, yes. to my father, to your husband, to yes. my husband, uh, all of them, everybody. Fathers are so, so, so important. So happy Father's Day to everybody. <laughs> Thank you again, uh, Thank Judge you. Matthew. I'm going to leave you all with a song, uh, but I'll be ra- here back next Saturday at 10 a.m. on NamasteRadioHouston.com and uh, follow Namaste Radio on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to download Namaste Radio's app on your iPhone and Android. Namaste and have a good, good, good weekend. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Oh,